I want to thank everybody for coming. And I have a couple of things to say before I actually announce charges in the two cases we're going to be talking about today. I've been doing this for a long time, uh, first as an assistant prosecutor, next as a circuit court trial judge, and now as the elected prosecutor for the last eight years. And it's been quite a while since I've seen an epidemic of children being shot and or killed in this region. And the most troublesome part of this in almost all of these cases is not a situation where you have a ran person that's randomly shot. It's all been situations, almost all, in cases where there were prior incidents involving adults who armed themselves and acted out, and acted out their own instant gratification, were out of control, and didn't take into account the fact that their children in sight distance. It's disgusting and ridiculous, and I don't know who does that. Who shoots off guns when children are around? They care, the people in these cases, care more about the insignificant petty disputes that they're engaged in and less than, less than they do about their children, less than they care about their children. With that being said, I want to first talk about the case of the People versus Ferris Dixon. We are charging Mr. Dixon today, 35 years old of Detroit, with a non-fatal shooting of two-year-old Tawan Smith on Sunday, March 11, 2012. This occurred outside a home located in the 15,000 block of Gilchrist. It's alleged that Mr. Dixon was arguing, as I said, with another adult male, armed himself with a gun, and shot it in the direction of the male, but instead hit the two-year-old child, Mr. Mr. Smith. Fortunately, he, is, he survived. He only has a gunshot wound to the abdomen and is expected to fully recover. We have charged Mr. Dixon today with two counts of assault with intent to murder, which carries a, 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 any term of years up to life in, in prison, one kind of felonious assault, which is a four-year felony, and one count of felony firearm, which is a mandatory two-year term that must be served before any time is served on any of the count for which he might be convicted of. We expect him to be arraigned this afternoon at 36 District Court at 1 p.m. Again, it's incumbent upon you to check on that to make sure that that is what's going to happen. Next, I want to talk about Bianca Jones. A human body is sometimes the best piece of evidence that a prosecutor and the police can have. It can speak to you. It can sometimes tell you what happened. It can sometimes tell you who did it and who didn't. It can sometimes lead you in the right direction. But bodies, as you know, are not always found in cases that police investigate or found in a condition that police and prosecutors can help them out, that can help police and prosecutors out. In cases like this, it takes much longer to put a case together for many reasons. The timeline is very important. And if the missing child, if the missing victim is a child, it's harder still because that child doesn't have credit cards or cell phone records for which we can track them. It doesn't help if we have a cooperative parent who is overly supportive of the suspect or person of interest. And in real life, prosecutors' offices across the country don't focus exclusively on cases that get picked up by the media. We have to pay very close attention to all of our cases. We are deliberate, thoughtful, and look at every possible angle here in Wayne County, even if some of those angles belie belief. That's, deliberate work takes a lot of time. I want to thank first, before I announce the charges in this case, especially the Federal Bureau of Investigation and the Michigan State Police. I want to publicly thank Karen Miller, the officer in charge from the Detroit Police Department who worked diligently on this case. I want to thank the assistant prosecutors who worked on this case as well as the investigative staff here at the prosecutor's office who have worked for a long time and for many months on this case. And before I announce the charges, I want to start from my right to your left and introduce uh, some of the personnel standing here. But when we just first point out that Karen Goldfarb and Keanu Lillard are the assistant prosecutors that will be trying this case. Tiana Walsh is the assistant prosecutor that will be trying the Dixon case, and I'm going to let everybody else introduce themselves. Chris Lawler with the FBI. Karen Miller, Detroit Homicide. Uh, Lieutenant Mike Shaw, MSP. Uh, Robert Spada, Deputy Chief of the Special Victims Unit. You know the Chief? Curtis Wilson, Sergeant Homicide. Patrick Muscat, Wayne County Prosecutor's Office. Jerry Dorsey, the fourth Chief of the Trial Division, Wayne County Prosecutor's Office. All right, at this point in time, we're going to, we're going to announce the charges in um, the Bianca Jones, what becomes known as the Bianca Jones case. We are charging today Bianca, Bianca Jones's uh, natural father, DeAndre Lewis Lane, 32 of Detroit, with the homicide of his two-year-old daughter, Bianca Jones. At approximately 9.45 a.m. on December the 2nd, 2012, he reported that he was allegedly at a location of brushing Grand River when he was forced from his car at gunpoint by two men who then drove them away. 
his infant child was in the rear passenger seat, according to him, and then he, it was later reported to the police, although not right away. Within 40 minutes of Lane's report, the car was discovered without Bianca Jones in it, and she has not been seen since December the 12th. An investigation was conducted by all the parties that you see standing before you, and his allegations of a carjacking and child abduction were proven to be, by the facts that we have been able to gather in this case, inconsistent, totally inconsistent with the facts. During the investigation, it was revealed that Bianca Jones was subjected to child abuse on the day of her disappearance, and a warrant request was submitted by the Detroit Police Department to the Wayne County Prosecutor's Office on December 13th of last year. On March 12, 2012, our extensive warrant review process was completed. The facts and evidence in this case will, it will be introduced, the specific facts, at a preliminary, preliminary examination or later a trial if there is one. Today we are charging Mr. Lane with first-degree felony murder, which carries a mandatory life term in prison without the possibility of parole, and one count of child abuse in the first degree. He is expected to be arraigned tomorrow, Thursday, March 15, 2012, in the 36th District Court at 1 p.m. And before we take any questions, I'd like the Chief to have a few words about either case, or both cases. Thank you, uh, thank you very much. Uh, first of all, I want to uh, thank Prosecutor Worthy for her uh, diligence, her deliberation, and her leadership, uh, particularly in the Bianca Jones case. A very difficult case, uh, and I'm very proud of the work of the Detroit Police Homicide Unit, uh, our partnership uh, with the FBI, which was invaluable, uh, and the Michigan State Police. Uh, I think this is a very vivid example of how well uh, our law enforcement partners work together uh, towards a defined goal and a defined end. Uh, as it relates to uh, the two-year-old victim, uh, the swift apprehension by patrol officers uh, in the 8th Precinct of uh, the alleged shooter, uh, I think really uh, did, uh, went a long way uh, towards solidifying uh, our commitment uh, to responding to these crimes, uh, doing our due diligence on investigation, uh, and working very closely with these talented men and women that you see here today. Uh, so, Madam Prosecutor, thank you again for your leadership on this. We'll take a few questions at this point if you have any. Uh, Kim, how many, you mentioned you've been at this a number of years. How many years have you been at this, and how many cases have you taken to trial in a murder case without a body such as this? I can't give you the amount. I can tell you when I was an assistant prosecutor, I personally tried three that were like that. I presided over several more. They are rare when it comes to the amount of cases that we do where we do have a body that was re recovered in some form or fashion, or some part of a body that's recovered. How much more difficult is it without a body? It's difficult for the reasons I mentioned. And when we have an adult, it's, it's a little easier because we can track to certain mechanisms, cell phone records, computer logs, um, other things, not to reveal all of our secrets, but some things are obvious, uh, obviously credit cards. But when we have a child, it's much different. And so, like I said before, the timeline is very important, and with all the investigative tools that were provided both by the FBI, the Michigan State Police, by the Detroit Police Department, and then um, the prosecutors in this case, and I must worked really hard on trying to put things together and assess what we could use legally in a court of law. You've had this uh, warrant request for some time. Was there any recent development that, that prompted you to levy these charges now? We, complete, we, completed, our invest, we completed our work. Basically, there was no... Um, one thing that caused us to be able to have a press conference and announce these charges today. It was just a very exhaustive work as I tried to explain in my early remarks and why it took a while. And we like to be thorough. We like to be deliberate. Can you go into the child abuse angle as much as you can on this? Why child abuse? I have gone into it as much as I'm going to. Um, there, was an inc there was an incident or incidents that occurred uh, and we believe they led in some way uh, or could have contributed to her death and that's why we've charged it as we've charged it. With child abuse of course being a predicate felony to the elevator to first degree felony murder. How confident are you uh, of the evidence in this case? We don't charge cases unless we're confident we can, confident and confident that we can prove it beyond a reasonable doubt. In speaking with her, Bianca's uh, mom earlier today, she said she hasn't been uh, aware of the news conference today. Um, are you reaching out to her anyway? And she, she still very much is of the opinion that until she sees otherwise, her child is still alive. And I suppose any parent would want to believe that. Um, have you? No, I thought I'd give you a little hint in my comments. Um, sometimes uh, we have to deal with parents who are cooperative, but not fully in with what the, the direction that the investigation is going. She is a victim. That's all I really want to say about that. Is there any indication that Bianca has been subjected? Mother of the victim, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. 
Uh, Bianca had been subjected to child abuse pr prior to that day. Was this a thing that her dad did this all the time? Again, um, anything like that will be revealed at a preliminary examination or at a trial later. I'm not going to comment on that right now. Child abuse is a predicate felony. Um, I know that all of these organizations here have been tireless. Maybe the chief has something to say about that. But. I mean, that's an ongoing effort, uh, and we, you know, will still follow up on any tip relative to that. I think for the family's closure's sake, uh, finding that body is critical uh, just for the family to have closure. So do you still have, how often do you have tips coming in, and, and I'm sure you want to encourage people if they know anything? Uh, again, 1-800-SPEAK-UP is the anonymous way to do it, or 313-596-2260, our homicide uh, section. Uh, and yes, we actively follow up on, on hot leads. Have you had any recently is the question? Have you had any leads within the last uh, not, weeks? None of no, none of significance. I understand that cadaver dogs actually use it. Can you talk about that at all and how, they might have, how that might have played a role? That's going to be a part of our evidence in this case, but it's a part of it. With all the rest of the evidence that we're going to be presenting in this case. This is clearly what you would call a classic circumstantial case. I'm not so sure there is a classic circumstantial case, but this is a case that certainly contains a lot of circumstantial evidence, which under the law is just as good as direct evidence. Some would argue even better sometimes. Is Lane going to be transferred from the other jail to the Wayne County Jail, or is he going to stay there with the doctor? It's my understanding that sometime today he'll be taken to an area within the Detroit Police Department and prepared for arraignment tomorrow. I really don't want to go into that now. I think uh, it was widely reported uh, from a policing standpoint uh, where our focus went. Uh, but my personal feelings, I, I'll keep those to myself. Thank you, everyone, for coming.